So I do have a cold, so that's why I sound a bit weird. And if you want to skip this intro, just go to six minutes in. It is a long intro, but I've got a lot of stuff to put my opinion into context. So, I wasn't initially going to make this video, but after giving the film some thought, I've came to the conclusion that based on the previous two films, the next film is 100% going to suck, and even if somehow it doesn't, the last two movies certainly did. So, the intro to this video is probably going to be a little long-winded, uh, but, you know, please hear me out because I feel like I need to put a lot of what I'm saying into context. So, you know, and, and, you know unless you came to this video just because you hated the movie already and just wanted to see if you agreed with me, Anyway, so I'm going to try and cover like every reason to why both of these films are bad and I'm going to split my arguments into objective points so that's things that I feel that are basically like irrefutable and can only really be explained just through straight up bad lazy writing and I'm also going to, you know, prove that it's lazy because I have my own suggestions for ways that I feel that they could have taken the series. Hopefully you think my ideas are good but, you know, I'll, I'll leave those to the end and I'm also going to split it into subjective points which are things that I feel that are more, you know, uh, a personal preference for why I disliked it. But, you know, I feel that you could argue either way if it's a legitimate gripe or not. Uh, most of these are probably a little bit more nitpicky as well. Uh, you might have heard a lot of what I'm going to bring up, but I also have a lot of things to say that I don't think anyone else has mentioned. Uh, and they're also... I'll be tying this video into um, The Force Awakens to just kind of show that The Last Jedi actually has a lot of plot holes because of The Force Awakens as well, and it's kind of dragged down by a lot of baggage from it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go down on record in saying that it's it's fine if you enjoyed these films. It's not a personal attack. Uh, you can totally like, you know, quote unquote shitty things. It's fine. Uh, and I'm not trying to like say that you've got bad taste or anything for liking them. It's fine if you enjoyed them. I mean, you know, sure, I personally really enjoyed the visuals of these films, but that really isn't enough, is it? You know, if visuals were the only metric to quality, then the Transformers films would be held in much higher regards. Do you not think? Uh, you know, but I'll argue this and heed these words especially. Why should Star Wars just get a free pass? I hold every film I watch up to a fairly high standard, you know, because one, I feel like, you know, there's no reason for a film or a story to be poorly written. It just takes a little bit of time and care. Uh, you know, there are good films, like, good films exist, you know, like, um, you know, Pulp Fiction, Shawshank Redemption, The Departed, American History X, Forrest Gump, Goodfellas, uh, City of God to just name a few. So, you know, it's clearly possible to write a coherent plot. You know, and I personally think that it's totally possible for a Star Wars film to be as good as any of these films. I, I just think that Star Wars just deserved better than what we got. Like, and by the end of this video, I hope you agree. Uh, you know, being complacent is what leads to us getting mediocre films. I, I know that we all wanted these films to blow us away and by going like, oh my god, it was so good when really it wasn't just lets filmmakers go, oh well, we can just release any old shit then, can't we? Like, you know, why should they care if we aren't caring? And understand that Star Wars is probably a bit harder to write for just due to the excessive amount of expanded lore, but you know, even then it just requires a little bit more time and iteration, you know, getting some like lore masters to like come in and check plot holes and stuff. And I, I, honestly, I think that looking at fan theories isn't a bad thing. Just because it's called a fan theory doesn't mean it's automatically bad. Just putting that out there anyway. And, you know, as I said, the Star Wars has a lot of expanded lore, but uh, this critique is, is going to fall very mainly on the films, especially because I do not at all think that it's a good idea or a good way to go about things to have somebody's overall understanding of a film be dictated by having to read a comic or watch a TV series. Especially when, you know, a lot of things only need a few lines of exposition or just a throwaway line in the film to just make you go, oh, okay, I get it. Uh, now, I also understand that no film is 100% perfect and, you know, I wouldn't have a problem with the two Star Wars films if it was really only a few of these problems, you know, here and there, you know, whatever, I don't care. But, you know, the fact there's just a huge list of issues with these films and, you know, sure, you could argue that some are nitpicky, but honestly, they're not. Like, a lot of them, you know, I'm watching the film and I'm just like, oh god, that's a bit weird, and then that just, you know, keeps coming up. So, I mean, just ask yourself, like, if, you know, you, you listen to my, my complaints and you agree with, like, a, a bunch of them, you know, can, can you really, can the film really be considered good if you're agreeing with this and it has that many issues, you know? So, I really hope this video doesn't come off as, like, whiny or whatever like that. I mean, I'm obviously complaining or critiquing the films, but my last video wasn't really that downvoted, which I was surprised about, especially because it was about The Force Awakens, and a lot of The Force Awakens videos were downvoted quite badly, but mine wasn't really that bad. 
So I hope that the way I'm portraying my arguments and stuff doesn't come across as like trying to insult anyone's intelligence. Like, you know, I, this is my opinion and I'm just, you know, adding a discussion here. I love discussing things, I love critiquing things. So, you know, when it comes to this anyway, you're totally entitled to your opinion. Now, I'm not insulting your opinion, but, you know, just tell me your opinion. Tell me, what you th tell me what you think of my opinion as well. Like, do you actually agree with the stuff that I'm saying, but you also, you ultimately enjoyed the film, but maybe I'm, you go, okay, it is a bad film, but I still enjoyed it. You know, that kind of thing. Anyway, I've been talking for long enough, uh, I, but I should um, quickly say that, uh, for the record, I will say that I, I really enjoyed Rogue One. Um, I think it got the story down really well, and although it created a couple of very small plot holes, ultimately it filled a very big one, and you know, I'm pretty well at that, but the overall story for the film itself was well paced, and it done a lot of things uh, really good, but it doesn't have particularly memorable characters, so just in terms of Rogue One, that is my quick stance on it. But I've spoke for this intro for long enough, uh, so let's just get on with uh, The Last Jedi and the objective points first. I'm just going to go through all these points in like a bullet point form, just going to quickly sort of touch, th touch on them and then if they need more expansion I'll do that, but uh, okay so the the Finn side story is just pointless, it literally doesn't advance the plot, um, endless amounts of deus ex machina, uh, more forced Disney humour, it just felt like I was watching Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, it just really didn't have a place in the film, especially because of just how avoided the whole situation could have been. So, which we'll get to. The whole escape plan arc um, led to the Finn arc in the film, but you know it was also totally unnecessary. Uh, her character is deliberately made out to be incompetent and or kind of shady. Uh, when she, you know, the, the way it's directed, I thought that she was going to be a bad guy. Uh, clearly, Poe is just going nuts because of it, uh, which is fair. But she's, but she's got no reason to say at least uh, right. Look, it's fine. I've got a plan. I, another way around this was to tie it to the light speed tracking. Uh, they mentioned that the technology is new so they could also be wary that there's a spy on board and this could have led to an interesting side plot potentially. Uh, regardless, that could be tied into the escape plan and her not telling Poe uh, that I have a plan uh, but we're wary there's a spy so it's on a need to know basis. She could have just said that, you know, if that was a thing. Even though there's still no reason to not tell Poe given that he's clearly not a fucking spy but, you know, this at least justifies our actions. The skate pods are cloaked, um, you know, we're off to Rebel Base, okay, good idea. That's all that had to be said, but it just simply wasn't. And then it led to the whole Finn side story because of it, so I guess they just needed a reason for Finn to do something. So, as much as I love that they used the light speed as a weapon, it just opens up endless plot holes. Uh, why the fuck didn't they just drive a ship straight through the Death Star if that's the case? Maybe some kind of explanation to say why they can do it in this instance instead of another. Um, why not do it earlier with one of the you know the other ships? Blah 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 blah. You get the point. Um, you know I always thought that you know when you're going to hyperspace like you're not really in that sort of physical part, so you couldn't really do it. I, I don't know. Anyway, um, the fact that there even is a chase happening to begin with is super nonsensical. Uh, just send some ships in front of the rebel ships. That's all you need to do. Uh, none of it needs to happen. Plus, you're in space, so if you ran out of fuel, you'd just keep going in the same direction at the same speed anyway. You wouldn't just stop. It's not how it works. So, um, Luke says that he won't train Rey after just going to the dark side so easily. I remember he says that, and, and then, you know, he says like, oh, I wasn't scared enough last time. But then he clearly wasn't, like, it amounted to nothing. So then he does just train her anyway. This is literally never expanded upon, and our character is still portrayed as like the ultra light side protagonist. So what the fuck did the hole in the ground or the mirror even mean? It's never explained at all. Sure, you know, it's on the planet with the first Jedi temple or whatever, so it's obviously tied to that, but you know, there's a similar thing in Dagobah, so what is it? Uh, the, you know, it's clearly shown in the film that going out of the place is bad in some way, but in Empire, uh, Yoda sends Luke, sends Luke into the cave, so can we just get some form of explanation on this? Especially when I thought the whole point in Luke was that, you know, regardless of being trained as a Jedi, he acted in passion and really was a big grey area. Um, you know, it's not all, you know, I always thought that that's what it meant by balance of the force thing, like because he kind of used both the light side and the dark side. But they just kind of dropped that whole thread, so, you know, I, I guess that's done now. Um, so these points are bad points about The Last Jedi, but they're also present in The Force Awakens. Uh, you know, this way I don't need to repeat myself later on when I talk about The Force Awakens, 
but it just drives home the point that a lot of what was at fault with this film was actually baggage from The Force Awakens. So, Rey's training is only two days. Like everybody said, you know, at the end of The Force Awakens, what the fuck is she going to train in? She's already done everything we saw Luke do after training, so, you know, what has gone on there? Like, what we saw amounted to very little, really, and a lot of people have said this. Um, you know, it didn't really seem to do anything in terms of how she handled herself in combat either, really. But, you know, after we see every other Jedi have to go through training in some way to do what they can do, she already knows how to do it. Um, absolutely nothing on Snoke. Uh, again, so many people have said this. Uh, it was set up massively in the first film and then just died in a way that is, frankly, not very believable in how powerful he comes across. Clearly, you know, he's a huge part of where the First Order came from and we get zero payoff. Now, I personally do not at all believe that he's properly dead and I reckon he'll be back in the next film or something like that. But at the same time, like, just we have to wait another film for this payoff when it should have been set up somewhat in the first film. Um, like I said, nothing on the First Order either. We have, you know, no idea where they came from, uh, how they're, like, how, not where they came from, how they came from. Uh, and I'll get more of this as well, I've kind of expanded a lot on this. Um, Luke's lightsaber, still not explained at all, I just don't even think it's possible to explain in any kind of elegant, non-ham-fisted way. Uh, still no mention of the Knights of Ren, I think it's unbelievable that they're not even in the film. I don't even think that they needed to not be in The Force Awakens, I think they could have, like, Kylo and the Knights of Ren should just have came as a package, it would have made it a lot more intimidating and a much bigger thing to get over. Um, Finn's character is still fucking useless to the plot. It didn't do really anything in The Force Awakens. Um, so it still does nothing. Uh, Phasma still does nothing. Uh, now, okay, so Ray's backstory now creates plot holes. People say that, you know, it so it gives the impression that anyone can have Force powers, essentially. And honestly, I don't actually mind her backstory being the way it is. It's just that because they've had to now put it in The Last Jedi, it makes some stuff in The Force Awakens really weird and jarring. So, for example, the scene at the end of The Force Awakens where Leia goes up and hugs Rey and just walks past Chewbacca having never met Rey before, this, all this does is, it's just so fucking weird now because, you know, they set it up for a big reveal. They, they didn't tell us Rey's second name. Uh, it had this weird, like, father-daughter thing with Han going on. Uh, but now this just all means nothing. Now, there's technically nothing up with her backstory, like I said. It's just because of the first film, if anything, it's now disappointing. Given, you know, she hears Obi-Wan's voice as well, I, I was kind of hoping it would be Obi-Wan's granddaughter. That's a personal thing. I still think that regardless of that, it's still kind of bad because of The Force Awakens and what they've done. But, you know, th this also just straight up does make her a massive Mary Sue. There's no lineage explanation for her powers as well. It just... just <sighs> You know, she's a nobody and is the only fucking character in the films to have force powers like she does, you know, without any help at all. No training. It also begs the question as to why there even is a map to find Luke if he deliberately, definitely did not want to be found. Uh, also, Finn was almost like split in two at the end of Force Awakens and given that he doesn't seem to be very much time before the end of the Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, he's just totally fine as if nothing happened, really. The, the only thing that came from that was like the joke of him like waking up. That's all we got from that. Didn't affect anything. Now I'm onto the more subjective points. So this is, I, I know that these can be argued. I don't really think that other points can really be argued without uh, the argument just being headcanon. Like, oh uh, no, uh, this could, I thought that this X or Y thing happened. Look, if we, we don't have information on a thing and you're just making up key information in your head, that, that is an issue. Show, don't tell, and definitely don't make us have to clutch at straws to try and ham fist two events together to get them to work. Anyway, uh, when it comes to humour, now, I, it's not like I don't find some of the jokes funny. I've just realised what it is about the delivery of the jokes that leaves it feeling a bit weird. Is The way the jokes are told are very, like, 2010, so current year humour, which is odd because the one joke in the film that, you know, that wasn't a kid's joke, but was more of a general joke, was the oh, do you think you got him quip by Hux, and this felt so much less like Disney's jokes, and it, it felt like something the character would say in that situation, rather than, oh, here's a joke, like, that's what all the jokes kind of feel like, they just go, oh, you're now watching a joke, 
you know, it just felt more like a skit when they're being delivered. But with the, do you think you got him? I think that was the perfect example of how it really should be handled. Um, so, again, subjective. I feel like Luke's mindset of rejecting the Force and the Jedi is fine. But the motivations behind it seem so unlike what Luke would have done. Considering he believed in Darth, you know, he believed Darth Vader could be turned. Uh, you know, at that point, he only sensed potential dark side in Kylo, and that was enough, even if for a second, to consider killing him because of it. Uh, you know, a lot of people have brought this up, and it's like, you know, it's true. If Luke thought that he could turn Darth Vader, then it, Kylo hadn't even done anything bad at that point, and it and it was a uh, by Luke doing that is what you know forced Kylo to the dark side. So just seems a bit odd. I just it is. It does seem off, like it's not completely beyond the pot, like the realms of possibility in terms of his character or whatever, but it just doesn't sit right. Finn should have died, uh, saving him in the last second just felt really cheap because Rose was basically in love with him after no more than 16 hours of time spent together. I really hate that, really hate that. Maybe if they were together for years you could believe it, 16 hours you'd, be, you'd just be, you'd be like, gutted. But you wouldn't be like, oh fuck it, let's risk my life as well. I mean, there's no way, I mean, people have died from less, you know? <laughs> okay, so Leia's in space force ability was just really odd. On one hand, it is cool to see her use force powers. Powers, I'm on that side of things. And it's not a huge logical jump, unlike most of the film, to assume that Luke probably taught her how to use the force in some way. Which does bring up more questions about what the fuck the balance in the force means. Uh, the term gets thrown about so much it's lost all meaning and if Leia can use force, like what, what does it actually mean? It's just a catch-all term for fucking anything at this point. But the way she uses it and just how extreme and ridiculous it is, it just leaves you scratching your head. Sure, you can survive in space for a little while, apparently, and not die, but how the fuck did she even get back into the ship without sucking everybody else out again? So, in theory it's cool, but it could have been better handled in a different way. At least Carrie Fisher's performance was better than The Force Awakens. So now I'm going to talk about The Force Awakens in this video. A lot of it is going to be um, in the context of linking it in with The Last Jedi. Now I already have a dedicated video on The Force Awakens which um, also explains my position on where I'm coming from a little bit better as well. So if you want to watch that. I'm also going to link another video in the description which although he's highly nitpicky and is almost a little bit too extreme which is why his video got downvoted so much. Uh, I think that he makes, it goes through basically the full film and he makes very good uh, arguments for uh, most of it about why The Force Awakens just a lot, so much of it is nonsensical, all the character motivations and what happens don't really make a lot of sense, don't really line up. So I'm going to link that in the description as well and you can watch that. So anyway, right, here we go. The biggest thing about The Force Awakens, or one of anyway, is the lack of backstory to where the First Order came from. So, right, hear me out. We know that it's not the Empire, because the Republic is back, so it can't be the Empire. Hence, they have to be a splinter group of of the Empire. So clearly, you know, they have a huge amount of resources, but it doesn't explain how they were ever left to get this amount of power. Especially if they were just a splinter group. Especially because, you know, they, they didn't go unnoticed, as there is a resistance against them. But why did they go unnoticed if the resistance is there and clearly there's enough of a resi enough of a need for a resistance for so why didn't the Republic do anything? If anyone knew about the First Order, then the Republic would obviously have done something. Uh, you know, and just not ignored them. So the Republic just don't care about a fucking huge gig an insanely huge, gigantic rogue military group. And even without the Star Killer by Star Killer base, they're a big enough threat to the galaxy, which is clear given the destruction of the Star Killer seemingly didn't even dent them. Why is this an issue? Well, at the end of Jedi, we're led to assume that that's it, things will go back to peace or whatever. It's hard to imagine any timeline where the Republic exists, but so does the First Order, and none of it is explained. Star Wars is a series built on its lore and backstory, and this is a huge unexplained aspect. And also, there's another unexplained aspect with Snoke as well in the film. It also brings up the question of where the First Order managed to get all the resources from. Okay, I'm sure there was a lot of Empire equipment and things floating about that could just have been swept up or whatever. Uh, especially because, you know, you could assume that there's still going to be a lot of people left over from the Empire that kind of want to continue on. 
but you would think that any of that would just be you know wiped out immediately by the republic so it just doesn't make any sense to me honestly i just can't imagine these two situations existing side by side now not only this the, the jedi and the force is considered to be a legend despite it being recent galactic wide history the events of um the prequels where the jedi was like an order that everybody knew about that was only about 50 years prior to what happened currently um hence ray even being aware that she could use force powers let alone a jedi mind trick is just absolute insanity especially now that it's confirmed that she hasn't received training and that she got her memory wiped or something it's not like that she's just a nobody according to the last jedi so seriously how could she be aware that she can do that after just finding out that the force and jedis are real for about two days it, like it is the least sensical thing like even if you were aware that the force was strong with you uh, but you've only just discovered what jedis are how could you know that you could do that sci-fi or not fantasy or not it's just completely outside the like I, you just can't suspend your disbelief and a lot of people were saying oh it's fine you don't know her backstory try to justify it that way well now you do know her backstory and it makes even less sense so Rey should never have even close to defeated Kylo at the end of the film all this does is reduce the threat that he poses as a villain now at the end of the second film Snoke is dead and Rey's already beaten Kylo so where is the threat she could just beat him again, never mind the fact that it's just nonsensical whatsoever that she was able to beat him or use any force powers whatsoever, like... The third Death Star. Not only is it incredibly derivative and is the biggest factor in making the film lose all personal identity, they kill it in the same way it does nothing to the First Order. Again, you know, it's fine against the Empire, but you know, the First Order have- they have to be a smaller force. And this thing is the size of a planet, you'd think it would, you know, it'd be a base or something. And the mechanics behind the weapon are just impossibly beyond all comprehension, it's just absurd. Now, I know that it's sci-fi, but the suspension of disbelief is a bit of a grey area and it can only go so far. It just poses so many questions, like, don't you realise that the density of the sun, it's like, no, that the volume of the sun is bigger than all the planets in our solar system combined so how can you fit that into the size of a planet what happens when you just get rid of the sun because all the planets revolve around the sun so does your planet just go careering off into space like so many questions here that are just never like not even needs to be answered they're just fucking retarded r2d2 just so happens to wake up at the end of the film allowing the plot to advance when none of what happened would even have needed to happen if he just woke up earlier why did the guy at the beginning of The Force Awakens, why did he have the map? How did he have the map? I mean, do we need to know that? I mean, maybe. You know, when you couple it with The Last Jedi, it makes less sense given the fact that Luke ran away purposefully to never be found. So why did he leave a map? You know, we can assume that this guy's part of the Resistance, which is his own problem, but now it doesn't make any sense as to how Kylo Ren would know about this map because he ran away before Luke and plus, if all that's missing is the map piece, you can just overlay that map piece on a full map. You don't need the completed map, you just need that one bit. Ugh. Finn goes from being traumatised as his friend dies in front of him. There is a novel backstory for this, but again, that of itself is an issue because, you know, the defection could have been done much better and have been used to further the story in a nice way, i.e., you know, he should have been the one to save Rey, but I'll get to my ideas on this later point is, after he switches sides, he's just fine with gunning down as many of his fellow troopers as if it's like it's nothing. We've got Deus Ex Canyon, where it just so happens to appear before Kylo and Rey, before she can do anything to him. You know, Phasma also, not the fact that Phasma done nothing, but what she did do was just turning the shield off straight away with no fight at all. I've already mentioned her, the under usage of her, but then, you know, <laughs> It's as if they went out their way to just not have T-R-A-R instead be her. He's also a bit of an issue as well. It's much a very small point, but he just so happens to be the only stormtrooper that has a weapon that can fight against a lightsaber. And he just drops his guns immediately as soon as he sees Finn. So odd. It's just, nobody would act like that. Anyway, 
Uh, the entire story is also based off a massive amount of coincidences the whole way through. It just so happens that it was the Millennium Falcon. Just so happens that Ray's incredibly force sensitive. Just so happens that Finn met them. Just so ha it's, everything is just so happens the whole way through the film. Okay, we're on to the more subjective points now. Uh, so Kylo is obsessed with Vader, but did nobody explain to him that Vader repented right at the end? This one's subjective because you could look at Vader and Anakin as two different people, but still, you know, it has to be relevant some way. Uh, Finn's character just doesn't act the way he should act. He was taken as a kid, uh, went through years of brainwashing and soldier training. Why does he act as if he was just taken a year ago and wants to go back to his normal life in California? It, you know, he should act far more detached and emotionless and not be aware of certain social norms and stuff like that. Surely, right? Um, reversing all of Han Solo's character development. Now, you know, we know something traumatic happened to Leia and Han, sure, so yeah, it might have been part of his way of dealing with things. I just personally don't like it, and it's, you know, it just completely, it, all, it felt more as if they went, oh, here's the Han Solo you all know and love, which it really isn't. Just seemed a really odd thing for the character to do, but not, co like, you know, not completely outside the realms of possibility. Anyway, another subjective point is the fact that they, you know, they didn't have a single scene with the old cast together in a room, which is unforgivable. And, you know, while we're here, can we just talk about the excuse of people going, you know, oh, well, they had to play it safe and introduce the series to a new audience. Why? Why did they have to play it safe? And especially in this way. Playing it safe is, you know, not doing something completely mental. Copying A New Hope beat for beat is just that. It's copying. It's derivative. It's not even playing it safe. It's just it's nothing. Like... I mean, did anybody going into this for the first time really expect to just see A New Hope again? Or were you thinking, you know, it would be a completely separate film? But it just doesn't feel like that. And it really, really genuinely to me feels like all the beats of A New Hope that are copied are just done worse. Because they have to change them slightly, but A New Hope, like, nailed it the first time. So everything's just a little off and they, they can't beat each beat. And finally, uh, for the subjective points, in the next I'll be going on to my improvements, I suppose you could say. Or at least this is, it's not so much improvements, but just, what do you think of these kind of ideas? This is just adding to the discussion. I want to hear your ideas as well for potential improvements on the film, that's something I would genuinely like to hear. Anyway, the scene where Han Solo captures the Falcon is just the worst part of the whole film. It has a real Disney-esque slapstick peril feel to it. The Rathtars kill and eat everybody right away, yet handily decide to just not eat Finn when they get him. It's just another one of these series of coincidences in the film. But yeah, okay, that's it. That, that should cover every gripe I have for the, the whole two films, especially when you include that other guy's uh, video as well. So I highly suggest going to watch that. Especially if you want like more of a, you know, just more backup for more reasons for why I think the film's bad. But, and again, again, I just want to reiterate here, the only reason why I'm complaining is because I like to discuss things and at the same time, I think that we all deserved better. And, you know, by not standing and not just blindly agreeing with the film being good, I think that, you know, we can get better, you know? I don't think we need to settle for what we got. Especially, like I said, if you agree with a lot of things in the list, Surely it means that I at least have a point somewhere, you know? At least try and meet me in the middle ground here, you know? You might have enjoyed it, but you can still agree with me, you know? Anyway, on to the improvements part. So, I guess, you know, these ideas, I feel, would have been better ways of going about things in the, in the films. Although, ultimately, I'd have an entirely different story, and I guess my ideas are based on changes to the current story. Anyway, um, one of the new nice things about The Last Jedi was the rejection of the Jedi that Luke had. It's a really interesting angle to go with, and, you know, it would be nice to see Luke reject the Jedi but still use the Force. He could uh, point out the failings of the Jedi and that ultimately it's not the dark side that causes people to do evil things, it's just evil people and their lust for power. You know, something like that, right? So again, I just need to point out these are very, very, very high-level conceptual ideas. Don't take anything I'm saying with any sort of like detail or nitty gritty, please. Just uh, overall take my idea in as just like a concept. <clears throat> anyway, it's just evil people that, you know, do evil things, blah, 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 blah. But um, 
and it's because of this that Luke could learn to do like all sorts of like really interesting things. Uh, you could also um, argue that the balance of the force didn't mean one chaotic evil side and one lawful good side like always in conflict. It, you know, it could mean like taking a true neutral path. Essentially by becoming a Jedi it always ended up creating Sith somehow. So Luke was finding a way to like end that cycle. Now, I mean, personally, I think this idea sounds really cool to me. Maybe it needs a bit of work. I mean, obviously, all these ideas need work, but, you know, I feel like this goes with how he's portrayed in the original trilogy. And again, if my ideas are shit, just tell me, but I actually really like this one. Uh, I think this is probably one of the most interesting ones I had. Um, and I think a lot of people kind of expected the films to kind of take this angle as well. But instead, it just goes, oh, no, it's time for the Jedi to die. But then immediately he changes his mind and then just starts training Rey. I'd have liked to see a different angle on that personally. So even though there is a backstory to Finn's defection, it doesn't really make any sense. Uh, but personally, I think it would have made more sense if he got captured by the resistance because say he got injured in like a firefight, for instance, and it's here he sees like the other side of the fight, you know, away from his indoctrination. So obviously this is like difficult and for difficult for him to take. You know, they actually help him out and they're like, you know, Oh, you know, you're injured and you weren't fighting back at that point, like, we're just going to help you. Um, and ultimately, he returned to the First Order. But, you know, there can be a little bit more conflict in terms of, like, how he's seen things. I, I, I hate these immediate changes. But ultimately, it comes down to him freeing Rey. And this, you know, would have given his character, like, an actual use. Um, I'm not against Rey, like, being good at things and stuff. But I just think that, you know, when she's good at literally fucking everything... I just think that, you know, what like this kind of like moment of vulnerability and not having just learned all the force powers immediately, that's all she really needed. All the rest of the stuff was completely fine. But I think this would have been, you know, just would really have given Finn's character so much more depth and so much just be more interesting, especially if he was the one to save Ray and then she ends up saving him later on. I think that'd just be like a nice balance. Seems good to me. What do you think? So, in The Last Jedi, they just really should have used the example that I gave earlier for avoiding the Finn subplot, and that's to say that Haldo does have a plan and it's just being kept secret because they suspect there's a spy. I've actually seen a bunch of people mention a similar way of going about it. This could have led to a much more interesting plot of the Resistance trying to fish out the spy. Um, you know, Finn could have played a part in that as well. Um, the Knights of Ren should still have been a thing, I think. It would have given each film its own antagonist, like working up to Snoke. It would have been, you know, really interesting if Snoke actually rejected the concept of the Rule of Two and decided to create like a lot of Sith apprentices so they could each like control like a sector or something. The point is, you know, maybe Han and Rey and Finn and the Resistance managed to take down a couple of the Knights of Ren, um, but it's a struggle and then Kylo Ren comes in and then just starts fucking wrecking shit. Ultimately, Rey only just manages to escape him. Uh, but, you know, she still does, you know, he doesn't manage to just fucking outright kill her. Um, the First Order could actually have came about from a possible retcon at the end of Return of the Jedi. Um, to justify their size, it could have been at the end of Return of the Gen Jedi, the Empire wasn't actually defeated. It was just an opening that the Rebels needed to take ground. Eventually, the remainders of the Empire and the people that didn't desert the Empire uh, they managed to like secure a part of the galaxy and they sort of like came together and you know really fortified up and things like that and in there they kind of like you know just you just captured and just fucking wrecked havoc in that area that they were in uh, hence why they were able to just go and freely fucking uh like get child soldiers and shit like that simply because no one was able to get any help and they just cornered off that part of the galaxy um and at this, in at the beginning of the Force Awakens, that's like where the Empire or the First Order are like making this new push uh, because they feel like they've built up enough resources. That could also explain why um, the Republic didn't even know about Star Killer Base because like nobody could get any intel from that area. It was just completely blocked off. Like you know, they send in scanners or just shot down. They're like it's just impenetrable part of the galaxy. That would have brought a bit, a bit more context to the whole situation. Doesn't take that long to explain, yet they give us fucking nothing. I mean, what else could it have been, realistically? But they tell us nothing, so they were just left in the dark. Instead of having Leia float back into the spaceship, maybe she could have, at the last second, like, used the Force to scatter the missiles or something like that. Like, for instance, she could have been, like, looking out the window and everyone's looking at her, and then they don't see it coming, and then she, like, uses the Force at that point. Um, 
It's still just as unexpected, but ultimately less retarded. Um, I, I even think having Leia use the Force is still kind of like borderline, but I'd still feel that this is a better way of going about it if the if you would have to have Leia use the Force. Um, because then you think she's going to die, and then she doesn't die, and then uses the Force, as opposed to you think she's dead, and then she comes back alive and Mary Poppins is back into the ship. Just seems a little, uh, a little more subtle, perhaps. Um, it should it never have been Luke's blue lightsaber. It should never have been that. It should have been his green one that he left behind after running away. So then, uh, Ray was essentially like taking it back to him as like a like a gesture, essentially. Now, admittedly, a lot of the film is hard to change because if BB-8 didn't have the map to look, then. Ray would never have gotten off Jakku in the first place, but having the map doesn't make any literal sense, and I can't think of any possible good justification for Luke running away at that specific point in time where, you know, the, the Empire's still about, but he ran away, and even if, you know, his uh, Jedi disciples or whatever, that all happened, I can't imagine that would be enough reason to run away either, it doesn't seem like it was something that Luke would do. Uh, I don't know, or at the very least if he does run away, I can't think of any reason for why you'd run away but also make a way for you to be found. So it has to be one or the other, you know. Alright, again, I just want to point out that I'm not even sure if my ideas are good, but how about this, right, so Kylo was never even meant to be a villain. Snoke essentially manipulated him and ultimately it's why he had such a hard time trying to stay with the dark side. Potentially, Snoke took Kylo in order to try and bait a confrontation with Luke in order to kill him because obviously Luke's related to him and, you know, he's the only Force person that's related to him. Um, so in the throne room, when Kylo goes to kill Snoke, Snoke knew exactly what he was doing and simply just got sick of his shit and tries to kill Kylo. In whatever way he survives and that's what turns him against the New Order after realising that he was just a puppet and... Snoke uh, doesn't care anyway, as he could have the rest of the Knights of Ren at his command regardless, so it's no big deal to him, and then that could be why he like turns to the light side or this sort of neutral side that I've spoken about. Uh, also, having this neutral side, I think it would be really cool if there was another Jedi, that's what the last Jedi was about, it wasn't Luke, it was somebody else, so um, Luke's trying to get rid of the Jedi and the Sith, but uh, you've got this like fanatical, um, like fundamentalist Jedi that just wants to like make the Jedi again. So it, it brings this sort of grey area to the Jedi itself where they're like the good guys and what he's doing is technically good but the way he's going about it is really bad. And then you've got the, the Sith but because of that it's like it's just creating the Sith. That would have been a really interesting interaction for me anyway. I, I like Shades of Grey but um, yeah we're not getting any of that. Uh, okay so the last thing. Um, a way of easily justifying the hyperspace ram would have been to say that the shields work on speed, which is why laser cannons deflect off them as they go faster than ships travel, but which is why you can fly ships under a shield and then shoot close to the, like, what it is you try to shoot at. So if you try to fly a ship into another one, the, the shield just destroys the incoming ship. So really what they should have done is have them sneak onto the supremacy in some way to disable the shield instead of the tracker. This also gives Finn another use because in my version he would know his way about the supremacy. So okay, again, my ideas aren't like, oh let, let me just rewrite all these films. Uh, I'm more trying to highlight how just an hour worth of just spitballing ideas in my head, I've came up with this stuff and it just, you know, if you actually just think about things, it's quite easy to just iterate ideas and build on ideas that you have and just make them better and iron out the kinks. I think that this is brought in, a, I think my ideas personally are brought in a lot of interesting concepts. But anyway, the video's already long enough as it is, I'm just going to end it there. Hopefully you've watched right up until now because you've been interested enough. But uh, also, if you've made it this far, I would highly suggest not subscribing unless you generally like Dark Souls content. This isn't a video that I would generally make, but um, I really wanted to make it because I made a previous one about The Force Awakens. So yeah, I'm going to end this video here and for all my subs that have watched this far, thank you so much and I hopefully you enjoyed this video, regular content as per next video, but I seem to be making a video a week so it's not so bad. Anyway guys, I will be seeing you in the next one, uh, see you.